All right, well, I'm under the Honda Acti, um, and fortunately, a rock came up and smacked this hose, and it is leaking now pretty bad under pressure. It's uh, when it gets up to temp, this thing is just spraying antifreeze and water. As you can see, it's been all over this, but I think I need to ease up on how fast I'm driving out at the property because I have clearly dinged some rocks pretty hard look at that on the suspension all right so i'm gonna have to replace this hose here it's gonna take this clamp here and that clamp right up top here's your better idea of which clamp to take off there In an effort to work smarter and not harder, in other words, to get that hose off easier, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the shield here. There's two bolts right there. And there's one right where the parking brake cable runs. And then there's two more bolts over on the left side. Let's get those off. Okay, now that the dust shield is off, it's gonna be a lot easier to get to. Let me see if I can just get it by hand here. It's probably real, oh yeah, you can tell it's super tight on there. Note that if you use channel locks to try and get the hose off, don't squeeze too hard because you can damage the metal pipe. This hose has been on here so long that it was literally stuck to the pipe. So I used a razor to cut it off. All right, once this is cut to length, that's going to fit perfect. All right, so I've got the hose that's going to have to work here. And this is part number... 22271. It is a Gates hose. You can get this from pretty much any auto parts store. I know there's no little bump here, but I've actually kind of lined this up and it still appears to clear without rubbing onto anything. So let's get it cut and we'll fit it again. See how it looks. All right, y'all. So I'm going to be reusing these compression clamps. You know, some po folks want to use the worm clamps, but I highly recommend keeping these. And the reason is, is because these clamps will expand and contract as they're heated up along with the hose. And believe it or not, it keeps from <clears throat> the edge of the hose where the clamp is going to be. It keeps it from swelling up. So as much as you might hate these, just use them. All right, so we got a little slight issue here. So I'm gonna have to order a slightly larger clamp. And the reason that is, is that this hose is thicker than the original. So, and these are slightly too small. So I'm gonna get one that's just a little bit bigger. It'll still apply uh, good pressure to this hose and keep it sealed up. All right, so let's get the outer diameter of this hose because I need to buy a, there we go, so. 3.39 millimeters and that comes out to this comes out to one and a half 1.578 all right welcome back everybody well the clamps have finally shown up i mean these things took forever so and i will be replacing the original hose with a gates 22271 so let me show you where this is going to go, just to recap. This is one of the lower radiator hoses on the EO7A on your Honda Acti. You know, these pipes, they run up to the front of the radiator. That, that is your send and return. And this one here is going to go just like that. So there we go. So this hose was thicker than the original. Let's compare that. As you can see, <clears throat> the two hoses are pretty similar. They're not exact. You know, it does not have that little crook in the hose there. But for the most part, it starts and ends in the same place. Hopefully there won't be any rubbing on the hose. We'll find out here. But the big difference you'll see is that how thick the new hose is versus the old one. The inner diameter is basically the same. Just the outer diameter is much thicker. And so the old compression 
clamps were too small. They wouldn't even go over this hose. So once you put the hose on over the pipe, there's no way you would have got the clamp to, in a good secured location. So anyways, let's go ahead and get this hose put back on. I'm gonna slide these down so they're already on the hose and rotate them into a way that I can access them like so. So let's just kind of pre-fit, make sure we can see and reach everything. Yep, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna twist this one down just a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and slide this on. This one you can't really see. There we go. Just like so. All right, let's go ahead and get the clamps on. And I'll just put the camera flat like so. This clamp. Now, I could not find, I actually have a special tool for these clamps and I could not find it. So I'm assuming it's uh, actually in one of my special tool stored cases over at the property. All right, yeah, make sure we get this clamp properly placed over the lip. Okay, so we can feel the edge of the hoses here and it feels like we got right in front of the lip. Let's see if we can pull that off. Ugh. Nope, that's not going anywhere. So that's good. I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit. I'm gonna push that hose up just a tad more. There we go. This is in the right place. Yep, there's the bump right there. So it looks like we are good to go. Now we just need to fill it up. All right, to access the radiator, it's this cap right here. So there's a wing nut. You take that wing nut off, you get this cover off, radiator caps there. But to fill it, to make life easy, we're gonna take this cubby out. There's a screw here and a screw right there. A screw in the back of the cubby. There's a plastic screw right here. Now with the cubby out, you got a lot more room. Take that wing nut off. Cover comes off. There we go. Bleeder and bleeder. Let's add some water. All right, so bleeding the air out of the system is pretty easy. So once you have the truck running, and you add any water that you may need. Surprisingly, did not have to add much water at all. Once the thermostat opened up, really didn't have to add much water at all. So, but you can open these two check valves here, this one and this one. If you have a nice flow of antifreeze and water mix, and you're good to go. You've got the air out of the system. There are two 10 millimeter bolts on top of these two coolant lines, which are under the Honda Acti. You have to remove the spare tire to get to to get to this access here. But as you can see on this pipe here, and this pipe here, you're gonna remove those 10 millimeter bolts, you know, and then once coolant flows out, air will have been removed from the system. So front left tire, coolant lines that run to the front, come up, and your two valves right there. No real clear view of this. So these bolts were seized, and I didn't want to strip them out. So I'm going to have to find another solution. All right, y'all. So if you're having a hard time bleeding the air out from these valves that are located in these pipes right here, because you can't get the nuts off or they're rounded off or for whatever reason, you can't get them open. What you can do is you can jack the front of the truck up and it'll give it, what it'll do is it'll raise the front of the radiator higher than what the pipes are and air will escape through the radiator valve. Start it up, let it run, fill it up as needed, and it will get the air out. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. Just wanna say thank you for making it this far. And if you haven't already, click that like and subscribe button and the bell notification if you wanna know when new content comes out. Three to four shorts per day, one to two long form per week. Take care, y'all.